chakra. It gives us this power of detachment. So we become the witness. That's what Sri Krishna said. We witness the uh, play of this world. If we're, we're, if we're detached, if we're in the witness state, we're not getting angry. So we're not get to, getting to the right. We're not catching on our right, we should. Or we're not feeling guilty. We're not catching on our left, we should. We're pe perfectly in balance. And this is the power of detachment and the witness state that this energy Kundalini gives us. Also with the power of detachment comes the power of self-knowledge. What is the power of self-knowledge? This is the power of vibratory awareness in our hands. Is the, for the first time, we could feel our subtle system, how it works within us. So for example, as I mentioned, if there is a problem in the cardiac plexus, immediately we feel it in the finger. If there is a problem with the aortic plexus, immediately we feel it in the, in the, in, in the Svadishtan chakra or now Svadishtan finger. If there is a problem, just if there is a problem, say in the um, optic chasma on our agya chakra, we feel it in the uh, corresponding center in um, in our agya finger. So this is called the vibratory awareness. Another thing this energy gives us, we have to understand vibrations, because sometimes people say, "Oh, I'm feeling." hot, I feel vibrations, I'm feeling cold, I feel vibrations. So we have to distinguish between vibrations that Kundalini energy, the pure vibrations and the problem vibrations. So when, we, when we're absolutely balanced, the energy of Kundalini is cool. It's not hot and it's not cold, it's cool. This is the cooling energy. And this cool immediately we feel on our fingers and on the top of our heads. Then there are vibrations, as we call in Sahaja Yoga, catches. So vibrations of tingling and catches sensations, we feel when Kundalini is kind of a burning problems within our subtle system. So these are the, um, the hot vibrations, and that's how in vibratory awareness we know. Um, I ask you to, come, some of you could bring um, candle, and some of you could bring the, the, um, the ice pack. It depends on your subtle system. If when Kundalini rises, your left hand is hot, it means that you're more on the left side, more on the emotional personality. So for that type of personality, you need your best friend is the candle. So what you do, you work with the candle on the chakras you need to work on. If you're on the right side, you work too much, you think too much, you plan too much, then immediately you will feel with the raising of the Kundalini, you will feel hot and tingling sensations on the right hand. So for that type of personality, you need to meditate and put the ice pack on your liver. That will help you balance yourself and Kundalini rises higher. So the, what, the next power of Kundalini is the power of uh, uh, reduction of tension. This one is very interesting because nowadays everybody said that I'm stressed out. What should I do to, to distress myself, to relax myself? In Kundalini Vidya, in Kundalini knowledge, this power is working automatically. How it works is that within us, we know there is the sympathetic and parasympathetic systems. In, uh, during the daytime, what we do, we work our sympathetic. When we run, we excite our heartbeat or we, uh, or we stress out. So the sympathetic is active. But when we sleep, parasympathetic works out and it relaxes, it does the opposite um, work. It, it relaxes us, balances us and uh, prepares us for the next day of work. When Kundalini uh, rises, it rises on the parasympathetic nervous system. In, in a subtle system, it rises on the center channel. That's why any excitement of sympathetic cannot affect Kundalini. It rises by itself. So when it rises on your central channel, and it, we could say, activates the parasympathetic nervous system, we have this amazing a state when we are not sleepy, we're aware, but we're absolutely relaxed. 
So the yogi, they don't know tension because tension automatically um, reduced or eliminated by Kundalini awakening. It relaxes us by, the, uh, by being active within us. So that's uh, um, Sahaja Yoga know-how, how to reduce tensions. Then um, power to stay thoughtless. That's also a great power. It's um, when energy Kundalini comes to our Agya chakra, it automatically makes us thoughtless. And this is when we become in the present because all thoughts, they're like the waves they are coming from the past or from the future, about the future. And on these waves, there is a present in the middle of this. And this is when we're in the present, we have the power if we want, we could think. If we don't want, we don't need to think. And we're absolutely watching in the witness state. And this is what is really called meditation. Meditation, because sometimes people say, oh, I am meditating. So, but their mental activity still goes on. They're still thinking about planning something. Or they could be sleepy. Some people have a nice sleep and they call, I had a really good meditation today. No, meditation actually quite an innate, intense internal process. So when you meditate, first thing you start, you start to figure out where is my Kundalini? What are the problems in Kundalini? So first you balance your subtle center. And then when Kundalini reaches the Sahasrara, the last center, then you become in thoughtless awareness and in meditation. And then one thing you want to know about meditation is that uh, some people say, am I in meditation? Uh, have I received my self-realization? A gr great indicator is that you are in meditation automatically if you feel this cold breeze jotting out of your head. If you feel that, you are automatically in meditation. And you would know that you are in this state when you're aware, you understand everything, and um, you are in this pleasant, very nice state of meditation. You could stay in meditation one minute, one hour, you could stay all day, you could stay all life, depending how you want it. And uh, um, if you want, you could. And another thing when you are in that state is that the power of attention becomes much more strong because usually our attention is wasted on things like you could go on the street and you think, oh, did I turn off my computer? Did I turn off my um, iron? So the attention is not in the present. But when you're in meditative state, if you need to solve a problem, the full attention goes into the solving a problem. And another very important thing of um, this attentive, meditative attention is that you have to know vibrations. And uh, how, um, when you reach the Sahasrara, you have another power of Kundalini is the power of collective consciousness. So what is collective consciousness? Is that you feel not only your own vibrations, but you feel vibrations of other people. Um, before uh, we had the classes, um, you know, the, the, the classes when people would come, yogis would come before and they will say, you have this problem and that problem and help to balance uh, other people's chakras. Why is that? It's the power of collective consciousness is that when Kundalini of a yogi reflects kind of Kundalini of another person. So you could know vibrations of other person and you could help them. You could say that, um, you know, you have, you have to work on these chakras or that chakras. It's not just a power of suggestion. Yogis actually feel that. And it's amazing if you take little children, realize children, and you could close their eyes. You could ask them to close their eyes and say, what is the, um, uh, chakras of that person and that person. They will all show you the same fingers. So that's, uh, that's how you could <laughs> prove that it is real. This vibratory awareness, it's, it is real. But why it um, works so, so much better with little children, because their attention is not uh, um, everywhere. Their attention is more balanced. So they know, they look at you and say, you have that problem, you have that problem. and. Um, Actually, even sitting in your room, if you want to know vibrations of anybody, there is a little trick that we have in Sahaja Yoga. 
um, you could put the name, even you start with your name, just write the name of the, um, at the palm, and this is the Sahasrara Center, reflection of Sahasrara Center, and then make a little bundle. You just write your name, make a bundle like that, and you will start feeling your vibration. And you could do that with anybody else. But you could do that only after you get this power of Kundalini, of vibrate, uh, vibrate uh, not vibratory, but collective consciousness. Because this collective consciousness is that when Kundalini reaches the Sahasrara center. So that's a little, um, that's a, that's a little uh, um, um, talk about the powers of Kundalini. So now we will listen to Shumataji lectures, but before you, if you have any questions about powers of Kundalini, um, you could ask me, and then we'll go to Shumataji lectures. Okay, if not, then uh, yeah, maybe you could, uh, you could play Shumataji lecture about Kundalini. I think this is the most important thing to understand about your own Kundalini, as self-realization is self-knowledge. And the one who gives you self-knowledge is this, your own Kundalini. Because when she rises, she points it out what are the problems on your chakras. Now, we say that it is pure desire. We do not know what purity means. It means your chaste desire. It means it has no lust, greed, anything in it. That power is your own mother and is settled in your triangular bone. She is your own mother. She knows everything about you. It's like a tape recorder. She knows everything about you and she is absolutely the knowledge because she's so pure. <clears throat> and whatever chakras she touches, she also knows what's wrong with that chakra. Beforehand. So she's quite prepared and she adjusts herself fully so that you do not get a problem by her awakening. If any chakra is constricted, she waits and goes on slowly, opening that chakra. <coughs> now this Kundalini is the primordial power which is reflected within you. And within you, in a human being, it is like many strands of energy. So it's like a rope and these energies are all twisted together to form this Kundalini. In a human being these strands, these strands are 3 into 7, that is 21, raised to power 108. But when your Kundalini rises, one or two strands out of this come up and pierce the fontanel bone area. Only one or two. Because it has to pass through the innermost nadi, known as Brahma nadi. It's all a spiral throughout, because Kundalini is a spiral, and these nadis are also are <coughs> like a spiral, like this. So the innermost nadi is the Brahma nadi. 
the outermost nadi is the right side and the second innermost is the ida nadi so through the brahma nadi she starts sending those threads by that they <coughs> relax the center by the relaxation of the center the sympathetic nervous system also starts relaxing and when it goes to the agya chakra then your heart eyes start relaxing your pupils start dilating and your eyes can become like mine very black absolutely relaxed so you can easily see in a person how far is the kundalini if it has pierced the agya then the eyes will be completely dilated and will be shining and then she enters into the sastrara now it is absolutely pure light of knowledge love compassion and attention all these three things are in that energy we know of many energies like electrical energy we know of uh, light energy we know of other energies but these energies cannot think they cannot adjust they cannot work on their own they are to be handled by us but this energy itself is the living energy and knows how to handle itself it thinks if you see a seed being sprouted you'll find at the tip of the seed there's a small little cell which knows how to go round the soft places and then how to encircle the stones and then how to find its way to the source that cell has got i would say a little kundalini in it the way it moves but within you is a tremendous force of kundalini exists so you have a storehouse of compassion which can be enlightened by the spirit you have the storehouse of love compassion and knowledge and ocean of forgiveness when people get realization they do not understand that they have to now grow and why they don't grow because they do not ask for these energies a person who is a realized soul if he says that i have to have more compassion my compassion is not all right my concern about others is not all right my generosity is not all right i am exploiting others i am exploiting their love then this energy starts moving giving you that greater dimension of love and compassion but if you do not want to be <coughs> growing in your awareness then she she says all right she is a half picked so you will let it she doesn't supply that energy which is stored within you i told you ki 
3 into 7, that is 21 raised to power 108. Let's now stay. Now we will do guided meditation. Um, what we will do, we will go on the central channel and we will, as we raise our energy Kundalini, we will feel at what, at what point there is a problem and we will try to work on it. So first, let's put both of our hands to Mother Earth, attention on the first Muladhara chakra. And here we will just ask, energy kundalini to start rising within us. And our Muladhara chakra we will ask the qualities of this center of innocence and wisdom. Now we put our left hand on the left and the right hand we put at the level of our Svadhisthana chakra at the base uh, at the level of our Svadhisthana chakra, the lower part of the abdomen. And we will um, do the circle movement. It's called abundance. So we will do a circle movement around our Svadhisthana chakra. And we will throw negative energy like that. We throw negative energy and we do seven times circle movement. Then we will take our hand a little bit away from our body and we might feel, some of you might feel cool or some of you might feel heat coming from the center. If you feel cool, it means the center is balanced. If you feel heat, it means there is still some problem in the center. So you could do another bandhan and throw negative energy. And here we will ask Mother Kundalini, please give me the pure knowledge. Give me the and pure attention. This is the power of the Svadhisthan center, Svadhisthan chakra within me. Now let's raise our attention and our hand to the Nabi center at the level of our stomach. And here, put our hand on our stomach. And here we ask Mother Kundalini, Please give me the sense of satisfaction and generosity that are the qualities of the Nabi Chakra. Now let's make abundance around this center, move clockwise seven times and throw negative energy. And put your attention again on your hand. See if you could feel cool in your hand or hot. If it's cool, the center is in balance. If it's hot, you might try to do that few more times. Now let's put a, our hand at the level of our cardiac center, cardiac plexus. And here we ask Mother Kundalini, please give me power of pure love, responsibility, and pure detached love. Let's make abundant, give abundant to ourselves clockwise. Throw negative energy. Again, let's abundant. And here, some of you, here is the very pronounced, you could feel the cool coming from your cardiac, from your heart chakra. So if you feel cool, let's move further. We move further for our Vishuddhi chakra. So since Vishuddhi is the power of um, our land, power of Sri Krishna of America, let's make abundant this Vishuddhi chakra. And we ask Mother Kundalini, please give me the quality of my Vishuddhi center. I'm not guilty. I will not hide away my sins. I'll face them. 
and I will be diplomatic. I will not get angry. I will be in a witness state and completely balanced. Let's check, move your hand away from your body. Check if you could feel any cool, if it's still heated up, let's make another bundan. Eventually it will cool up, it will cool. And you will feel cool in your hand. Now here we come to the Agya Chakra. And here we ask Mother Kundalini, please give me the power of forgiveness. Please give me the power of thoughtless awareness. Let's make abundance around the center. Throw negative energy and feel cool or heat. If heat is coming, because we're big thinkers. So here, let's say together, or I'll say, you'll say within yourself, hum, sham, three times. Hum, sham, hum, sham. Again, move your hand away from your forehead. If you feel any cool coming, if heat's still coming, make another bundan. And now put your hand on the top of your head. And here you ask Mother Kundalini, please come into my Sahasrara. Please give me the power of collective consciousness. Please give me self-realization and sustain my self-realization. Make give abundance to yourself and check if you feel cool coming from the top of your head. That's how with our hand and our attention, we put our attention on the top of our head. And now no thoughts should come. If thought comes, just say, Ham Ksham, or I forgive. And now we will listen to meditation music performed by yogis. Yeah, if you could play, if you could play the music now, we'll all meditate together. Mm -hmm.
Okay, welcome back. Let's finish our meditation. The same giving ourselves uh, um, abundance. Let's do it all together. One, two times. Three times. And then seven times. Balance. Okay, if there are any questions, I read some chats that people thought it was too fast. But I was told this is for the intermediate people. But if you want, I could repeat some of the things that uh, I might have missed or you, it was or I was going too fast. Let me know. I think it was perfect. Thank you so much for the meditation. Um, I when we were dating the chakras, this is Diana, by the way. Um, I really felt it in the void uh, area. And um, I, you know, it just, I wanted to say, you know, I felt every clearing as we were, you walk us through the clearing and it was really powerful. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. This is one of the method, um, you know, to, to get to Sahasrara. Yeah. Hi, this is Marcy. And I would also just like to say thank you for a beautiful meditation. It was perfect for me. And um, I felt it in the Vishuddhi. And thank you for helping me clear it out. Um, there is the video that was played um, that you, you might will, you will get information about this video. That's basically in the video, we, uh, it's the same idea. So the powers of Kundalini, so you could listen, you could listen if, if, you, it, if you like, if you want to know more about it. Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Ritu, Jeshri Mataji. I felt really good and thank you so much. Uh, for conducting this session. It's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, this is Renu. We joined from Ohio and we enjoyed it as well. Uh, I felt some heat near my Agya Chakra, but then it cleared up and I think it was very nice. Uh, I also have my mother-in-law with me and she also felt really good. So thanks. And so I, I saw uh, Garvin, you're raising your hand. Please go ahead, uh, unmute yourself and speak up. Yeah, sure. Can everybody hear me? Yes. 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 Okay, good. All right. I was just saying that I am, I am this is my very first uh, class with the, the experience group, so I, I'm relatively new. I, w I was just noticing that uh, it was a little bit hard for me to follow um, your hand movements um, because I guess of the positioning of the camera. You know, as well as the body placements when you were placed your hands on, say, your abdomen and so on. Um, I was able to clearly see when you put your hands on your head or on your neck, but uh, if you could maybe change the camera to show your full body or more of it, uh, it would really help uh, some of the, I guess, neophytes like myself in, 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 in getting up to speed on uh, where to place your hands and where to, you know, um, Basically, so we place our hands on the chakras. So mm -hmm. the Svadhisthan chakra is at the level of the aortic plexus. So you put at the uh, base of the aortic plexus. And the uh, Nabi chakra is the stomach area. It's the, um, the solar plexus. Then the heart chakra is the cardiac plexus. Um, then Vishuddhi chakra is the cervical plexus here. And uh, Agya chakra is the um, uh, optic chasma. So this is, uh, this is where chakras are located. So that's where I put my hand. And uh, well, I think that you could go to, if you would go to our channel, you, it's YouTube channel, you could just type in free meditation TV. And there are some uh, lectures for, for beginners. So you could go by chakras and uh, that maybe will be easier for you. 
because I was told that it's an intermediate so people kind of know the base, but it's nice to be challenged. You know, it's not interesting to all the time hear the same thing, right? <laughs> so let me just uh, explain to you, uh, uh, if you don't mind, uh, uh, I'm just going to show him. Okay. So uh, your Swadhisthana is the low abdomen. So you put your left hand on your left and right hand just on the chakra, so low abdomen center. So when we do movement, I don't know my camera can do that. Oh, you just uh, uh, lift your hand away from your body and just do clockwise movement. Just around that chakra, do the clockwise movement. When, when we say clockwise movement, think about your body as a clock. So that's the front of your clock. So your hand should move according the same direction like the hand of the uh, clock will move. So that's the clockwise movement. And then again, she said, so you stop your hand a little bit away from your chakra, just feel it's cool or warm. So if you feel warm means you need to do more. So again, you do something and again, you feel does your right hand feel cool or warm. When it feels cool means the chakra gets clear. So you move to the next chakra, Nabi is at the navel area, you can put on it. And if you want to give energy, you also can lift up a little bit and just do clockwise movement. That's it. And then again, you stop in front of your Nabi chakra, just feel, is it cool or warm? If you feel cool, means you can move on to another chakra. If you feel warm, just do more clockwise movement. That's all. So for each chakra, you do the same thing. Does it make sense? Yes, it, it does. And, and I will definitely follow the, uh, the links that have been posted. Um, as mentioned on, uh, you know, getting up to speed or ramping up on, um, you know, on the hand placements, but, you know, thank you for the visual. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for speak up. Um, I would like to share something real quick um, that um, I've been doing Sahaja Yoga for maybe, I don't even know how long, but um, at the beginning, and I hope this helped the new person. I wanted to do everything right and I wanted to understand every little detail. And then as time progressed, I realized that this is not about just that, it's about also the energy. And whenever I was on a different workshop or a different session with somebody else, I stopped trying to understand everything. And when I couldn't follow, I just closed my eyes and I felt the energy of the collective meditation and keep going inside. So I would say, don't be so hard on yourself and take one day at a time. But when, if there's something you don't understand, just go inside yourself, connect with the inner part and feel the energy of all of us who at the end of the day are collectively healing. So I don't know if that helps, but I wanted to share that with you. Thank you, Diana. That's uh, that's good. Just just uh, letting you know that I did feel the uh, the vibrations. I felt the cool vibrations with my right hand. I'm hoping that's what I was supposed to feel. So I was able to follow in sequence as you moved up the body. And uh, you're right. It was just I'm holding on to that feeling, and the details will come in time. No problems there. Thank you, thank you, uh, Diana. Thank you. Uh, I God. could I could say that when I started the Hajj Yoga many years ago. I tried to read everything about it, and then, uh, and even now, after 20 years, it's still the knowledge is <laughs> like there are powers of Kundalini. I told you about seven, right? And Shumata just said that there are powers of Kundalini, strings of energy of Kundalini is 21, and the power 108. So there's a lot to learn. Yeah, before I forget, uh, please, uh, any of you want us to keep uh, contact with you, please share your email. Uh, if you're not comfortable, you can send me a private message, just to share your email address and we can uh, contact you later. Thank you. So that would be the, <laughs> um, if there are no more questions, I guess that could be the end of our session. Uh, any more questions, everybody?
And thank you, Oksana. Beautiful session. Thank you. Thank you. I was glad to to conduct this session. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye for now to everyone. Bye. 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 Thank you.